Hello, I am the Irish guy, and right, this was a month of freaky transfers. Football transfers that look so strange. You swear you're looking at hubbers licking your grandma's feet in the bath? So go on then. This is the weirdest transfer that happened every day of January. Right, let's go. First, Hugo Lloris to Los Angeles FC. So first in the list, we have Hugo Lloris, a 37-year-old goalkeeper who's played nearly 500 games for Tottenham, nearly 150 games for France, was captain for club and country, has a World Cup winner's medal in his pocket. This man has had a sickeningly great career. So it was weird to see him shuffled out the back door to join Los Angeles FC, a football club that aren't even 10 years old. I mean, if this club was a human being, they'd still be watching Rugrats getting Pikachu toys for Christmas, and most likely their mattress would usually stink of wee. Lloris arguably deserved a massive emotional send-off at Spurs. Instead, he gets shuffled off to America through the back door, where if he's lucky, he'll have had a few chubby Londoners logging into their mummy's Wi-Fi to wish him luck on Twitter. Poor Hugo. Second, Donny van de Beek to Eintracht Frankfurt. Look, on paper, this doesn't seem that weird, considering Donny van de Beek was an injury-riddled, wet muffin at Manchester United. Someone who now prevails about as much self-confidence as I do chicken pox on my bum. I mean, the writing was on the wall that this Dutch midfielder might just be a waste of everybody's time when he failed a pretty routine loan spell at Everton. But don't forget what at Ajax, this blonde bombshell was linked with Real Madrid and reuniting him with Eric Ten Hag. I know it doesn't always work like that. I foolishly thought that when Rafa Benitez rocked up at Chelsea, he'd coax Fernando Torres back into being that world beater he was at Liverpool. Nah, he was still mostly wet pudding. And similarly, when Andrei Shashenko linked up with his old AC Milan buddy Carlo Ancelotti at Chelsea, someone who he won a Ballon d'Or playing under? Nah, he was, he was still pretty useless. So yeah, no, it doesn't matter if Ten Hag and Van de Beek were best buddies who ate tea and cookies with each other at the beach, Van de Beek has still been loaned to Frankfurt. To me, this isn't really weird, it's just sad. Imagine if he had rocked up at the burn about four years ago, the fans would have eaten him alive as if his head was made of cheese. Third, Zach Steffen to Colorado Rapids. I remember doing a video a couple of years ago when Zach Steffen absolutely screwed up an epic up semi-final for Man City. I remember saying that he'd ruined his city career and some Americans in the comments told me I was overreacting acting that Stefan would be fine. No, he was about as fine as me after a sleepover with the priest. No, the 28 year old goalie has finally quit the Eddie had for good after five years. And uh, I don't think anybody noticed just scuttling back to America with Colorado Rapids to play in a stadium called Dick's Sporting Goods. Fourth, Marcello Pitaluga to St. Patrick's Athletic. We are four days in, and I don't think this weird transfer is getting topped for almost absolute insane levels of creepiness. Lads, Marcello Pitaluga is a Brazilian wonderkid goalkeeper at Liverpool. 21 years old, spent his youth career at Vasco da Gama and Fluminense. Brazilian goalies are so in fashion right now, I've long since thought he was the eventual heir to Alisson, because surely Irish goalie Queen Kelleher is going to get bored and move on. Well, no. Now it's Pitaluga, not Kelleher, who's gone Irish, joining St. Pat's on loan. What? This Brazil superstar is now living in Dublin in a virtually all Irish dressing room playing under manager John Daly. Someone with all the clout and fame of a squash spider? Pintaluga is a world champion with the Brazil under 17s. Can you imagine the future Alisson living in some rundown council flat in Crumlin and just being so confused what his teammates are talking about? He'll think a shift in coppers is a type of ice cream. Fifth Tilo Carrer to Monaco. Remember all the hype surrounding German defender Tilo Carrer when he rocked up West Ham for PSG for 10 million pounds 18 months ago? Yeah, he's now just been loaned to Monaco in France with an option to buy for 9.5 million pounds. I'm just surprised how quickly it's taken David Moyes to just give up on this highly rated guy. Sixth, Taja Buchanan to Inter Milan. And here we have the first ever Canadian to play in Serie A. Well, I mean, officially. I mean, Fakeo Tomori plays for AC Milan and he was born in Canada, but apparently the internet doesn't count that for some reason. Ah, be because he's played five times for England, that'll be why. Even though nowadays, Gareth Sauke just treats the guy as if he's made of poo. But yes, here we've got Tajan Buchanan. Someone who's played college football for Syracuse Orange. Something that sounds like a rotten posh dessert served at snooty restaurants. But yeah, this is a 24-year-old winger who impressed for three years at Club Rouge in Belgium and now has got a six million switched into Milan. Look, Inter are known to have weird transfer targets. Three years ago, they were unveiling Ashley young. I remember when they were desperate to buy Tom Ince. They're like that weird disturbed child who keeps asking Santa Claus for a jar of fingernails and his mummy's underwear. But Buchanan, yeah, it's it's another strange one. Seven Sasa Kalachis to Eintracht Frankfurt. Yeah, it went a little bit quiet for transfers around the seven. Nothing too crazy or wild. The weirdest I could find were Wolves letting Beanpole, striker and club record signing Sasa Kalachic join Eintracht Frankfurt on loan. But, I mean, it's not actually that weird, is it? Eight, Mohamed Ali Cho to Nice. So here's Mohamed Ali Cho. A couple of years ago, this French forward was seen as an absolute wonderkin in France. The devastating talent about PSG and Everton should have regretted letting slip out of their academy. 
Yeah, no, it seems like it was all a big fuss over nothing because Real Sociedad just sold him to Nice for just 12 million euros. The kid is 20 years old. Can we stop the fuss now? Ninth team of Werner to Tottenham. Look, it's always strange to see Tottenham signing somebody who wasn't failed as a monster. Game-changing Chelsea superstar just a few years ago. Don't forget how in demand Timo Werner was in 2020. It looked like Chelsea had won a 50 million pound race when they beat Liverpool to his signing. The German striker looked like a colossal monster buy that would change the game. So to see him now rock up at Spurs on loan. Again, this would have been a bit like a Tottenham had signed Fernando Torres in 2015. Again, it would have looked weird. It still looks strange to see Werner in a crystal clean white Tottenham shirt. It looks a bit like I'm trying to adjust my eyes to seeing Darth Vader in a wedding dress. Just weird. 10th Fabio Carvalho to Hull City. How? 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 How did Hull City manage to convince Fabio Carvalho to join them on loan? Don't forget, this is a top Portuguese prospect. An attacking midfielder who has played Champions League football for RB Leipzig this season. He's on Liverpool's books, surely. Surely he'll have some Premier League interest. Price above. Why not back to Fulham? Where were Fulham in all of this? He had an 11-goal season for Marco Silva's boys as they won the championship title when he was just 19. This is a talented kid who was played with Ronaldo. How is he now going to drop down to the championship to play in the dressing room with the likes of Tyler Morton, Billy Sharp, and Roy Delap's son? If you had told Carvalho at the start of the window that he would be playing on the same team as Adama Traore, he would be jumping for joy, thinking he was going back to Fulham. Now, it's the bad Adama Traore. The one who doesn't look like he eats piglets for lunch. I mean, tell Carvalho that he'd be at the same club who have Xavi Simmons on the payroll, and he'd assume he was just staying at Leipzig. Again, no, it's the bad Xavi Simmons. Poor Fabio. 11th, Eric Dyer to Bayern Munich. Okay, this. This is the weirdest transfer in the list so far. I know Eric Dyer has played abroad before. Christ, well, the bloke grew up in Portugal. But I don't know, does he have Tottenham outcast? Get rewarded with a move to actual Bayern Munich on loan? Bear in mind, this is the first time Dyer has been away from Spurs in 10 years. He's never had a loan spell away in his life, so yeah. To see him play for an absolute monster. One of the biggest clubs in the world, Eric Dyer at 30. What? I would have thought his next move would be to someone like... Burnley! 12th, Jed Spence to Genoa. Jed Spence is having such a crazy career. When this right back was on loan on Nottingham Forest from Middlesbrough and was gloating on Twitter at Neil Warnock because he just won the Championship Player Final, this young right back thought he had made it. If he had just joined Forest on a permanent deal, that would have brought stability, security. Instead, he's since been on so many aeroplanes, he'd probably, by the law of averages, have had at least one baby throw up all over him. Since that final, he's joined Tottenham, then Wren, then Leeds, and now Genoa on loan. What's even more disgraceful is that he has played less than 20 league games since that playoff final win. Chucked out of Ellen Road. Now he's on a weird loan spell in Italy with Genoa. Why do I get the feeling that this apparent English super talent is just turning into a Ravel Morrison-esque journeyman living out of a suitcase around the world? Honestly, within two years, he'll probably be playing in Mexico trying to pretend his life is now like Breaking Bad. 13th, Leonardo Bonucci to Fenerbahce. Oh, Leonardo Bonucci, just retire. This is an Italian beefcake defender who uh, feels it does feel like he's had pretty much a one club career at Juventus, right? That's the only club anyone ever remembers him doing anything. I mean, the strange thing though is that his Wikipedia club section is now looking long. He's actually moved clubs 10 times in his life, has played for both Milan clubs too, which is weird. But yeah, he argued he should have just retired at Juve in 2023. Instead, he decides to follow out the club, threatens legal action, joins Union Berlin in Germany where he does nothing, and is now 36 years old and at Fenerbahce, where he gets to play in a dressing room with Edin Dzeko, Dusan Tadic, Fred, and um. Josh King. Ah, uh, that's a weird group for poker night. Just retire, Leo. 14th, David Datcher for fan of the Burnley. Yeah, nothing too strange here. Just Burnley signing Chelsea, missed it striker, David Datcher for fan alone. That's ah, it's not that weird. Next, 15th, Hannibal Mebri to Sevilla. Oh dear. This is a disaster. Wouldn't it be nice for Manchester United fans to know that at least a few of their players aren't entitled brats with the ego of a Game of Thrones king? Here we have Hannibal Medbury, a talented one for the future midfielder who this month rejected a loan move to Everton, probably because he saw what that did for Van der Beek, and instead joined Sevilla on loan. Yeah, he made his debut in a 5-1 defeat to Dragona, was then left out of the squad, made unavailable for selection, and got told off in the media by failed Watford boss Kiki Sanchez Flores. Oh yeah, is now at Sevilla. To be fair, an entitled playboy brat, maybe. But I mean, at least he's not out there chewing his teammates' ears in the shower and eating their fingers on a slice of toast. Why, his name is Hannibal. 16th, Hamad Triori to Napoli. It's weird. Poor old Hamad Triori's time at Bournemouth. Was weird. He joined on loan from Sassuolo a year ago. That was turned into a 20 million pound permanent move in the summer. But the Ivory midfielder has barely played. Last month, he was hospitalized after being diagnosed with actual malaria. Oh, that sounds like a horrible Christmas where he was probably puking up his dinner all over his feet. Yeah, three weeks later, 
is loaned to Napoli, the reigning Serie A champions, with a reported option to buy for 25 million pounds. The guy has done nothing in 2023, and yet he gets rewarded with this super move. Napoli are signing scraps on a Bournemouth bid. What is going on? 17th Sergio Regalon to Brentford. Imagine telling anyone a couple of years ago when Sergio Regalon arguably looked like Tottenham's best player after Harry Kane, a supposed left back superstar, after joining them for Real Madrid. Tell anyone that he would then be sent out on this morning loan spell so let it come to Madrid and Manchester United. And then by the time he's 27, we'd now be chucked in a loan deal to Brentford. It does sound all sorts of strange. 18th Jordan Henderson to Ajax. I've already said this. I have made multiple YouTube shorts about this one. By the way, go check them out. In one of them, I take an axe to a door. But this is strange. Seeing Jordan Henderson, a successful Liverpool captain, playing in the air division for Ajax. This man who is desperate, apparently, to bring a huge change to the Saudi Pro League. But now... He's hated it so much that he's actually given up four million pounds. He's taken a huge pay cut to leave. But I mean, don't feel too bad for him because apparently he's still going to earn around 110,000 pounds a week at nearly 34. Ajax, what are you doing? He is joining a chaotic fallen giant who are sitting bottom of the Dutch league at Halloween. What? 19th, even Perisic, the hatchet split. Where did this one come from? Ivan Perisic is going to be one of those players who you forgot ever played in the Premier League. This is a Croatian winger who Josie Mourinho was absolutely desperate to get at Manchester United, what, six years ago? He finally rocks up at Spurs, contributes to a horrible season, is injured for most of this one with a crucial ligament tear, finally hobbles back from injury, and then it's just... Gone? He turns 35 years old next week and is now just on loan back in Croatia with Hajduk Split. The club whose academy he was in as a child before he was pinched by Socho in France. I mean, fair enough, I guess, but it's weird, right? Did anybody predict this a month ago? No. 20th, Josh Doig to Sassuolo. Josh Doig is seeing the world. This is just an ordinary Scottish left wing back. 21 years old, came through at Hearts and then Hibernian, has zero Scottish caps, but is probably actively playing for both Andy Robertson and Kieran Tierney to break their feet playing paintball or something. But yeah, he's just switched Hellas Verona for Sassuolo, opting to stay in Italy after rejecting a move to Marseille. I didn't think unfashionable Scottish full backs could survive in Italy for more than six months. I thought they'd be so confused by the language barrier and strange menus that they just opt to eat pizza in their room every breakfast. So, fair play, Josh. 21st, Javi Manquillo with the Celta Vigo. I forgot Javi Manquillo existed. This Spanish fullback has not made a peep since Eddie Howe took the Newcastle job, just quietly sitting in the background, walking his dog in the morning, saying nothing. Even for the Northeast Derby earlier this month, everyone just forgot that Newcastle actually had an ex Sunderland player in their ranks. It's just Manquillo is about as memorable as Snail Vomit. Anyway, Rafa Benita snapped up for Celta Vigo, but I don't know. Uh, what was it, half a million quid? What's weird to me, though, is, I mean, how old do you reckon this forgotten fullback misfit is 34 32 35 in the back no <laughs> he's still in his 20s man Keo is still just 29 and yet how has treated him as if he's a pensioner with leprosy on his chin. 22nd, Emilio Marcandes to Hibernian. Emilio Marcandes is arguably a modern Brentford legend after scoring their championship playoff final win over Swansea in 2021. That's all forgotten now, though, because he since joined Bournemouth has, done, has not done much. And now this Danish attacking midfielder has just joined Hibernian. Bit weird, I suppose. 23rd, Emmanuel Dennis to Watford. Yeah, this is your typical weird move. Emmanuel Dennis for joining Watford on loan. After failing everywhere since he left them, it's like when Rocky Santa Cruz wound up back at Blackburn. Or when Benjani went back to Portsmouth. Just ugly, low-key, second stints. After flopping everywhere else since they left them the first time. Dennis was good for Watford. 10 goals in his sole season for them in the Premier League. But yeah, he was a disaster in landing a forest and it's the Bopa success here. And he's now back at Vicarage Road in the Championship. It's kind of sad. It won't work out by the way, it never does. Santa Cruz and Benjani, former goal machines at Blackburn and Portsmouth, but in their second spells, they scored a combined one goal. I expect more of the same from Dennis. 24th, Javier Hernandez to Guadalajara. Yep, Javier Hernandez is still going and has finally quit his well-paid cushy gig at the MLS at LA Galaxy to, um, at 35 years old, finally return to Guadalajara in Mexico. The same club where Manchester United discovered him nearly 15 years ago. I'm just surprised this guy's not retired yet. Instead, he's now going to play under former Real Madrid midfielder Fernando Gaggio, and his assistant manager is Fabrizio Colaccini. Someone who Chikorito used to regularly terrorize when he was at Newcastle. Just a bit mad. 26, Leander de Donker to Napoli. What is it with Napoli signing these unwanted Premier League bench warmers? Yeah, you're even asked to believe utility man Leander de Donker getting a loan switch to Napoli. Just what? How? Why? They won Serie A six months ago with 90 points? What is going on? 27th, Nemanja Madic to Leon. Nemanja Madic has turned into such a journeyman since quitting Manchester United just 18 months ago. He's already onto his third club since joining Roma and then Ren last summer. He's already on the move again, signing for Leon in a 2.6 million pound 
deal? Now, normally, I would have thought that a switch to such a French giant like Leon is a spectacular move for a midfielder who turns 36 soon. I mean, he's penned a two and a half year deal, meaning he is guaranteed a top job until he's 38. Here's the bad news. He could well be playing most of that contract in League 2. They're in the relegation zone in France. Manage, this is a terrible move. Imagine if Leon actually get relegated with the likes of experience in Dayan Lovren, Nicolas Taglafico, Chorentin Toliso, Alexander Lacazette, Ainsley Main and Niles, and the many managing their team. Of those core group of players I've just mentioned, they have played a combined 185 times for Liverpool, 118 times for Bayern Munich. 338 times for Arsenal, 189 times for Manchester United, 154 times for Chelsea, and 169 times for Ajax. How are you getting relegated with that? 28th, Kagra Suyunku to Fenerbahce. Ah yeah, here we have Turkish beefcake centre back Kagra Suyunku. Look, it was weird when he traded Championship Football with Leicester City for a monster move to Atletico Madrid. It was up there with Diego Simeone bringing Matt Doherty to Atletico. It was strange. This move is actually a lot more normal. Doyonju joining Fenerbahce on loan. Moving back to Turkey, this actually makes sense. What's weird is that this move didn't just happen in the summer. Having a six month pit stop and let it come Madrid instead. Strange. 29th, Peter Musa to FC Dallas. Peter Musa is a talented Croatian striker, 25 years old, been a Benfica for two years, was supposed to be Darwa Nunes' heir, and yet it's just moving like a 39 year old. Choosing to join FC Dallas in the MLS? Um, why? 30th, Angelino to Roma. Yeah. Remember Man City's former ball left back? Yeah, Angelino has since turned into such a massive journeyman since he cut the Eddie had on 2021. He since played for RB Leipzig, Hoffenheim, Galatasaray, and now at 27, is tying up a low move to Roma. To be fair, he does smack of a Roma signing. Someone who's failed at a bigger club already. But why does he want to play for a bumbling rookie? Newbie coach like Daniel De Rossi, agreeing to join an ownership group who just been off Mourinho? What? 31st, Moaskin to Atletico Madrid. Wait, no, 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 hang on, no. Apparently that fell through. No, apparently Keane has failed his medical, so that one's not happening. Instead, the weird, strange deadline day move today is Carlos Alcaraz. Oh, this is his best afternoon since he won Wimbledon last summer. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Different Carlos Alcaraz. No, this is the small attacking midfielder at Southampton, who's just snapped a low move to Juventus. This is an Argentine 21 year old who's not exactly rifted up this season, mostly in and out of Russell Martin's starting 11, and yet somehow has fluked a move to Juve. Juventus is a place who should be signing the world class, the elite. It wasn't that long ago they were signing Cristiano Ronaldo. There is a world class Carlos Alcaraz out there, but in tennis. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Let me, go watch it. let me know what was the weirdest one. So let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to get a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.